We're rolling. Okay. Tech TV. We're doing an interview here, Gene. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. Vivac TV is proud to welcome Ted Nugent. I'm proud to be Ted Nugent. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ted, we're going to talk about Bow Hunter Magazine. One of my favorites. Well, Bow Hunter Magazine is basically uh, why my guitar is so juicy and the notes have so much soul. Because the extension of an individual psyche, integrity, and basic attitude of which I reek of, um, or would that be Eureka, uh, is based on what you got in your guts, what you got in your life. Is your antenna picking up stuff around you, or are you drooling on yourself, missing everything? Never done that. I've always had my antenna stretched out to maximum accepting capabilities. The optimum nude, I like to refer to myself as. And what I've done throughout my life is I've maintained my mental, physical, spiritual health. And the ultimate reference for my senses, i.e. connection with myself and my surroundings, mm -hmm. because I'm a hunter. Primarily a bow hunter, which means I've got to use my God-given capabilities to get close to big game animals if I want steaks. And I want steaks. And I got steaks. Steaks are high. So am I. It's in the air and that's free from. Anyhow, um, boy, the way I do that dazzles me. Uh, so what I've done is I've uh, taken my lifelong lifestyle and deep respect for God's creation as a bow hunter. And I put it together in a magazine format because I found, you know, I'm communicating something. I mean, I really like to mingle and do the breaststroke in the rapids of humanity throughout my life. And at the tender age of 42, I discovered that there's just no way that I can keep up with the letters and correspondence that I get. I do a hell of a job. Uh, I'm sure I've been living the whole pack of white guys, but I can't get to everybody. And I'd like to get to because I'm an everybody kind of guy. So I found that the reception out there and the excitement level of people that want to know what Ted Nugent, how Ted Nugent does this, how, what, what makes me tick, the interest level uh, was substantial enough for me to put my own magazine in. And uh, Ted Nugent World Bowl Hunters is going into the second year, we're pushing 5,000 members. It's the proudest thing of my life. I'm proud of my records, I'm proud of my statements, I'm proud of my guitar, I'm proud of the soul, I'm proud of the songs I've written, uh, I'm proud of the maneuvers I have conducted. Um, but uh, I'm mostly proud of this magazine because it delivers not only the guts of what makes my guitar what it is, but it's what makes me and my appreciation for my family and that reciprocal thrust of life, what it is. Anybody who wants to really be cool, anybody who wants to really think they're alive and they know how to pile and drive, get a hunter safety system, get a ball and arrow, and get out there and sneak around the woods. And then I'm not talking killing, I'm not talking shooting here, I'm just talking the whole procedure the thought waves. Now, if you don't become proficient enough with your archery attack, then you have to go right to hunt because it's your ultimate duty as a reasoning human to become proficient enough so that you make a quick and humane kill. This is how I feed my family. I think it's I think my wild turkeys that I kill with my bow and arrow are much more difficult to get, but far superior than butter balls. And anybody that really wants to get a thrill, the, uh, the psyche demands and the hands-eye coordination of bow hunting and understanding the equation of man is so fulfilling and so exciting that those that's where those guitar notes come from. They go, <laughs> whoa! And that's where I get this attitude, and it's because I I use six foot three, 175 pounds of Ted stuff in everything I do. And I talk about it and I, I review my
my motivations, in my pursuits, in my match. And I, I just couldn't, I couldn't keep going on about it till the end of time because it was so important in my life. Mm -hmm. Now you picked up and you started bow hunting and playing guitar, or shooting and playing guitar approximately when you were about eight years old. Yeah. Uh, did they both develop together? They really did. In fact, they motivated each other. And I've said this a number of times before, but it's really succinct in projecting what the two extreme functions deliver for me. Rock and roll is supposed to be loud as hell with as many people as you can possibly fit in at a pace that inspires the adrenaline. Volume, multitudes, action. Well, the best bow hunting in the world, the best archery, is silent with nobody with super peaceful concentration. So the extremes experienced in both endeavors really set up the next pursuit. If you want to race a marathon and do the best you can do, which is extreme physical exertion, the best preparation for that is peace and a silent sleep. And if you want the most peaceful silent sleep, I recommend you go do a marathon, you with me? So when you utilize your guts for activities, it's, it's what an intelligent person will think of when it's time to charge his batteries. The hunting charges my electric batteries so I can rock and roll beyond your wildest dreams. Okay, how, um, you said that, uh, that hunting and conservation uh, kind of like go, it's the same thing. How can you explain that? Um, well, it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so simple that uh, I, I'm glad you brought that point up because I take it for granted. Those people that have lived in cities and are many generations removed from the earth need to hear the truth. And the truth is, is that conservation was a word coined by a hunter because in 1900 he went, I don't care if wood duck feathers are in demand for ladies' hats. We are disrespectfully slaughtering these ducks. We must conserve them. Therefore, we will eliminate the uncontrolled slaughter of these animals for the benefit of the animals. We must restrict the harvest of deer and turkeys and elk and caribou and bear and antelope for the benefit of the infinity of these valuable, majestic resources of wildlife. It was a hunter that said, no more marketing indiscriminately. We must stop the season on buffalo. A hunter said that. A hunter stopped the marketers. Are you with me? There's a big difference. The hunter said, we must make laws that restrict the time of year, the time of day, the species we harvest, the weapons we use in harvesting, the individual bag limits, then we must force fees on ourselves to hire professionals to ascertain the population dynamics and the intricacies of sustaining habitat conditions. You still with me here? To sustain these magnificent animals. And then we will put an 11% tax on everything we use in the pursuit from sleeping bags and bows and arrows. And we will use this money to safeguard habitat and we will review the annual harvest of these resources to ensure the future for our children and our children's children of these honorable creatures of wildlife. We have soil, we have air, we have water, we have wildlife. We have ruined the soil, we have ruined the air, we have ruined the water, we have more wildlife than we have had in a hundred years. Does somebody want us to stop? Kiss my ass. Hunting is conservation. Without hunting, there would be no animals. In Kenya, in 1970, there were 150,000 elephants. You with me? Got that figure in your mind? In defiance of hunters demanding conservation of this resource because they saw the growing herds decimating their habitat, biologists and scientists from around the country said, we must cull some elephants. That means kill. No, you can't kill the elephants. Let Mother Nature take its course. Now there are 7,000 left. Because they 
Because they ate themselves out of house and home. If we could have killed 10%, there'd still be 120,000 elephants there. And we would have had game managers paid for by hunters' dollars to stop the poaching and to review the habitat conditions for the sustenance of not just the elephants, but the kudu were gone, the zebra were gone, the gemsbach were gone, the nyala were gone, the impala were gone, the cheetah were gone, the lion were gone, the leopard were gone, the rhino were gone. They all went because they wanted to save the animals. That's not how it works. I'm getting pissed off here. Did you notice that? Because hunters are cool. Hunting is not only cool, but it's essential. And anybody who doesn't get it, just eat chicken McNuggets. We got plenty. We've heard that you ordered 10 billion squawking, bleeding, dying chickens. We heard your order, and we're prepared to fill it. Just leave management of wildlife to those who really cherish it. Why don't you tell us about your safari? Whew. Am I making a point here? Dear, did you know this? Thank you very much. Um, my safari, did I mention that life is a guy's own safari? <laughs> and I bought one right this minute there going, one now, got him! Um, life is a guy's own safari, and I welcome you to come join me and have a guy's own kind of day. Um, I safari all the time. I'm safari in Akron tonight, and there's no bag with it. Whoa, I'm gonna whack him. Um, life is a guy's own safari, and that's the name of my boat. Anyhow. My next hunting trip will be next month. I'm going on a family turkey hunt with my family. Uh, there's always turkeys hanging around. Somebody's got to whack them. Uh, no, I'm going down to Missouri where my son and daughter, my sons, I have two sons now, Rock was eight months old, and my beautiful wife, Shemaine, and I will go down to Missouri. Then we will do our damnedest to stalk uh, the majestic turkey. And believe me, those that don't know it, turkeys really are majestic, except for butterballs, of course. Butterballs like her dips. They're like city folk. Um, no offense. <laughs> They're for city folk. We will um, try to kill a turkey with our those animals. Turkeys have the same ocular makeup, that is eyesight, of the birds of prey. They can discern a color spectrum that we are not aware of. They can see the blink of an eye at 100 yards. You have to be the most stealthy, in control, conscientious hunter to get anywhere near a wild turkey. They're so alert, so aware. Um, and then, of course, I will go back to Africa in June, I hope. I manage a 40,000 acre uh, piece of ground there that consists of different landowners who have a choice. These landowners can either make their living, as we all do, we all have to make a living. Is there anyone out there that doesn't make a living? Then you're a chump. Anyhow, uh, do I have a lot of cocky attitudes about social conditions? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, uh, well grounded. And well grounded. <laughs> and, 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 and finally grounded. Uh, like some good cane and pepper. Um, there's those microphones speaking me up because these are incredibly graphic descriptions. I, mean. <laughs> I will manage these gentlemen's and ladies' ranches in South Africa because they have a choice. Either support their lives and their land by killing all the wildlife so they can grow goats and sheep and cattle or manage it for wildlife and maintain this spectacle of indigenous wildlife conditions. And that's what I can do in the hunting operation. In every country in Africa where they still have hunting, you have healthy and expanding herds of animals, including endangered species such as rhino and elephant. Well, the elephant's not really native. Uh, South Africa, Botswana, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe all have expanding herds because they still hunt them, which means they can still pay for the animals. Um, but these people have a choice to either manage the ground for the spectacle of wildlife in its natural setting, or kill them all for goats. Uh, the choice is quite obvious. And as long as the wildlife can uh, pave their own way, there will always be one. It's, it's fascinating. I don't just take this, this isn't like bowling to me. This isn't like shopping. This is, this is my life. I live to make sounds with my guitar that will either excite vibrant people or piss off country to western idiots. That's my goal with the guitar. And my other goal is to embrace meaningful life activities so that the compassion and the enjoyment and, and health in all its forms of my family and my friends and ultimately myself is meaningful and, and gratifying. 
this guy's deep. <laughs> How did you get involved with the, uh, with the safari in Africa? Did somebody come to you or did you approach them? Or? Um, unbeknownst to me, because my hunting has been very private to me. Whereas my guitar playing and my attitude is pretty much projected for all men. In fact, all women. And men can take it or leave it. Um, somehow, along the way, I earned a reputation in the hunting community for knowing my stuff. And again, I didn't pursue it or have any idea what was really going on because my hunting is always very private. I will talk about it because I believe it. And I will share the excitement because I believe that people need that. But I don't really promote it. No, 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 really no, no, I don't really promote it because it, it is a private part of my life. But I found that there's a reputation and a doctor called me from Africa and uh, hired me to manage his property. And I went, let me think about it. Okay, I'll do it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is those damn Yankees. Dun, 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 I'm dun, speaking dun, of bow hunting. Here they are. We're just going to just the run. ultimate bow hunters. It's whack, whack along, and mixed stack. Man, look at who you talking This guy's all dressed up for a rock show or something. Or something. Well, I shot these boots for him. Did you really? God, I feel so blue. That's that blue <laughs> hair in the human face. And Michael Gap these pants for him. I feel so underdressed. Well, well, fine, you have the damn Yankees. What do you want now? <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. You know, I have one more question for you, then, then we'll go on to the damn Yankees. Oh, thing. fine. What do you expect out of the magazine in the future, and what do you hope for the magazine? I expect out of the mag magazine a very simple development, and that is to take the truth to people who might not get it otherwise. The truth and the excitement and the joy of knowing the real equation of wildlife and man. And to stop these tobacco-chewing, drug-infested animal rights clowns who need to run face-to-face -face with Ted and die in the night. <laughs> they got out of that Did I mention... So that's basically, I want, I want people to embrace their connection with the earth. That, if we talk environmentalism, we talk uh, ecology, that's environmentalism, that's ecology. What trail have you left today? Do you recycle? Do you think conscientiously about how you use resources, whether it's wood, paper, air, or soil, water, or squirrel meat? Tommy is yeah, not squirrel meat, Chad. Squirrel meat. <laughs> um, so that's what I want the magazine. You, you have a squirrel wallet, don't you? I have a squirrel watch. Show them that squirrel watch. Will you? Actually, is this is this Rocky the Flying So now back to the world of rock and roll. So that's it. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's 4008 West Michigan Avenue, Jackson, Michigan, 49202. <laughs> the headquarters of 10 News World Waters. Stop in. I have fresh liver around the clock. <laughs> Nine seven six ten. It's the stinger, not the thong. <laughs> <laughs> one one dollar per phone call. Okay. And and now, if damn Yankees 